Welcome to Red Eye. It's like America's got talent without the talent. Let's go to TV's Andy Levy for our pregame report of this New Year's Eve edition of Red Eye. A look at the next decade and stuff. Andy, it must be cold outside in that studio. Greg, it's absolutely freezing outside here in the studio. Coming up on a very special episode of Red Eye, nakedness, your most private of parts exposed for all to see, maybe even some probing. We'll take a look at the future of airplane travel in an age of terror. Plus, a Danish newspaper says President Obama is greater than Jesus. We'll try to figure out if greater means something different in Danish land language. Mm. And finally, the biggest cheaters and scandals of 2009. What do they say about America? What does America say about them? And what does about say they America them? <laughs> we'll answer all these questions straight ahead, Greg. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> they keep the music loud, the lights is low, the kid with a different style, I like to flow. It's time to move the crowd tonight to the show, see what it's all about. They like to go, Greg. Well, thank you for sharing that information, Andy. Happy New Year's, Greg. <laughs> Let's welcome our super awesome and totally spectacular guest. She's the sultry muse from Fox News. I'm here tonight with FNC anchor Patty Ann Brown. She's hotter than a Rolex in a pawn shop. And take my word for it, that's hot, people. <laughs> He's the Marco to my polo, the Fay Ray to my King Kong, the Laverne to my Shirley. It's my repulsive sidekick, Bill Schultz. In Dubai, he's a harem girl. Well, she's the piston ring of the right wing, the delightful SC Cup, author and columnist. That's two things. She's so bright that high beams are now called SC Cup beams. It's true. Look it up. And he's the apple pie of the deadly spies. Mike Baker, former CIA operative and diligence president. What the hell is that? He knows covert ops like I know sugar pops. And you wouldn't use them to swat flies, even if you had flies. It's our New York Times correspondent. Good to see you again, Pinch. My New Year's resolution, continue existing. <laughs> Sad but true, Greg. Very, very sad, but true. And now to the Gregalog. It's a rattlesnake of reason. Gregalog. So like a crappy fruitcake, media winners and losers lists usually arrive around this time. But this year, who needs them? We know who the winners are, the folks on flight 253. The losers, the rest of us. See, those passengers survived because of crappy explosives and their own bravery. They weren't saved by our president's cool approach to fighting terror. And that scares the crap out of me. And it should scare the crap out of you. And it all goes back to the climate change conference. Can you believe in a decade marked by the greatest challenge in our lifetimes, terror, that our president favors ice caps over icing terrorists? Seriously, America should have insisted on a worldwide conference on terror well before one on climate change. Fact is, terrorists, not temperature, go out of their way to kill people. I mean, I love polar bears, they're so fuzzy. But I put people first, which is why I think everyone should pretend that the attack on Flight 253 actually succeeded. After all, an attempt at terror is still terror, regardless of the terrorist's competence. Sadly, with this administration, every act of terror is just an isolated extremist, untethered to belief. And that prevents Obama from connecting the dots, even when those dots happen to be on exploding underpants. And speaking of, what do we know of this current terrorist? Well, his name is Abdul Mutalib, and his wealthy Nigerian dad actually fingered him over his extremist views. Plus, this guy bought his airline ticket in cash. Oh, I get it. He's Irish. And if you disagree with me, then you're probably a racist. Suddenly, I'm seated. That's magic of television, people. Hey, Mikey, I gotta ask you, this guy was the most obvious threat imaginable. I mean, he bought a $2,000 ticket in cash. His dad already said he was danger. How did yeah. we miss him? Yeah, well, I mean, hindsight's great for being able to connect the dots, right? right? And of course, that's a little bit of what we're seeing right now in the Obama administration, politically expedient and tossing the intel community under the bus. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in a perfect world, what would have happened? The guy got on the list because his father did go in and express yeah. concern. Right. So he ends up on the list. In a perfect world, then, they would have cross-referenced that to his visas, right? right? And they would have said, does he hold a visa? And then they would have pulled him off on secondary screening. The problem here is that the counterterrorism holy grail has been ever since 9-11. How do you create a system that pulls all the thousands of bits of information in right. and allows you to collate between all the various agencies and our foreign allies overseas? Mm -hmm. The answer to this is something that I don't think the, uh, the current administration has the nuts for, and that is we've got to get serious about the, where the threat's coming from. Mm -hmm. To make the list process, the TIDE and all the other lists, more effective, we've got to start profiling. Yeah. I mean, it is as simple as that. We know uh, where the problem comes from. The yeah. problem comes from Muslim extremists. Mm -hmm. And we know the, the short list of countries where they tend to originate from. Well, 
it, this is the question. No one wants to say the word Nobody profile. Yeah. And Essie, uh, my feeling I love is profile. Yeah, I figured, <laughs> okay. you, 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 whenever you go to a bar, you profile. Uh, I do it out of every minute of every day. I'm yes. getting word from our producers. We're going to fix all those p words and edits. So stop <laughs> okay, saying. Okay. Okay. Right. Are, we, are we trying to fight a politically correct war? And isn't that? absolutely impossible. You can't win a politically correct war. Well, We're trying yeah, not to hurt feelings. Absolutely. And isn't that pathetic? I mean, isn't that a tragedy? Mm. This president is trying to prove, he is hell-bent on proving that you don't have to be a hawk to fight terrorism. Mm. And to do it, he's going to pretend that we're not actually at war. Mm -hmm. It's ideological. It's not about airports. Yes. Airports isn't going to do anything about Fort Hood or Fort Dix or an embassy bombing. Mm -hmm. This isn't some kind of system kink. Mm -hmm. This is an ideological battle, and, and someone needs to acknowledge you it. You know, by, I, by I once went to a bar called System Kink. It was oh. amazing, <laughs> absolutely amazing. And I believe I was wearing the same dress, Essie. I, I think, think it's I required. PAB, do we have a precedent more concerned with feelings than safety? Well, you know, everyone's saying here that our administration doesn't profile, but you know, the fact is our Homeland Security Department has come out strongly in favor mm. of profiling. The reason we didn't catch this guy is because he didn't fit the profile. He's not a U.S. military vet. Yes, when they searched right. him, they didn't find any tea <laughs> yeah. bags on or him. Or an Irish yeah. nun. Right, yeah. so, you know, the, the, but our, you know, the, our Homeland Security Department is firmly in favor of profiling. We just have to maybe tweak the profile just a tad. But right. I want to ask Bill before I go, you know, Bill, this guy had some very lonely posts on various websites about how he was frustrated sexually. Does it bother you that you have so much in common with this terrorist? <laughs> First of all, I showered for this show. Yes. Can't emphasize that enough. Uh, in your weird, blustering, outraged, roundabout way, you do have a point. The problem with this guy is that he went on Arab Arabic sites and started venting about how sexually frustrated he was and uh, talking about how hard it is to be a hardline Islamist, Islamist in, in, in America and all the temptations. Why don't we red flag those type of postings? Right. Why it was there to begin with. He is horny as hell, and he's not going to take it anymore. And that was in black and white, and we should have marked I, it. I'm amazed at how eloquent you are being this drunk. Huh? <laughs> Thank you. It's champagne and... Well, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, I think Bill also was responding to uh, Abdul Muttalib's uh, lonely rants. Yeah. Well. It was, there was a lot of euphemisms in there that only I saw. All right. All right. Shut up, everybody. I've got to move on to another story. All right, from a terrorist dipwad to the son of God. One was born in a manger, the other a born hope and changer. Awesome. But who's the true messiah? A Danish newspaper makes the case, surprise, for Obama. Yes, this week, Denmark's Politiken argues that Obama is greater than Jesus, calling the president, quote, the practical savior of our times. In an editorial, they cite his achievements, his health care bill, his rescue of the financial industry, and, quote, the quickest ever reestablishment of American reputation. And as for that other guy, quote, we have Jesus miracles that everyone still remembers, but which only benefited a few. <laughs> so true. Anyway, while the Danes are high on Obama, Americans are less so. His approval rating around 48%. And according to a Gallup poll, when this decade began, Americans satisfied with the direction of the U.S. stood at about 70%. At the end of this decade, it's now at 25%. That's like less than a third or something. Yeah, it's an eighth. <laughs> Meanwhile, what do the New York Times' Frank Rich and MSNBC's Chris Matthews think of Obama's performance so far? Well, with the help of Extranormal.com, we reconstructed a debate that they probably had about the president. <laughs> Hello Chris Matthews. You look very sad. What is wrong? I'm not sad Frank Rich. Actually, I'm confused. About President Obama. How can you be confused by the greatest president we have ever seen? That is the issue. Is President Obama the greatest president ever? Or is President Obama the greatest president that will ever be? Couldn't he be both? Well, what about the time before there were presidents? What do you mean, my dear friend Chris? Isn't it unfair to Obama not to compare him to other leaders before America existed? You are right. And what about leaders after America disappears? Exactly. He is the greatest leader before, during, and after America ever existed. You are right. What are you doing later? Just hanging out. Want to go hot tubbing? I am staying at the Radisson. Will there be lotion? I believe Oberman is bringing it. <laughs> no, they really are fair and balanced. Hey, Mike, 
Uh, how would you assess Obama's first year in office, and what do you predict he'll do this ne this following year? Well, you know, I, and first I should point out a little known fact is you wrote the soundtrack to that piece that we just watched. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Didn't you? That yeah. was very nice. Yeah. Uh, something else that most people don't know is is for this year's Christmas pageant, mm -hmm. because you know how I like to tie everything into my, my family. Uh, my my little boy Sluggo, who's <laughs> six months old, was chosen as to be Jesus in the pageant, mm -hmm. and my other boy was was a sheep uh, in the manger. <laughs> and then uh, oddly enough, they actually chose one of the kids in the Sunday school to be Obama, yeah. and he led the heavenly host as the as angels rose up above that it was very touching. <laughs> That's nice. And wow. I, I hadn't made the connection between Jesus and Obama until that happened. I, think, I disagree. 